Hi guys, welcome to the next course. In this course, we're going to be looking at the most characteristic features of the characters I was talking about in the early lesson and the kinds of villains we're going to find in current movies. It is in animated movies or maybe as a concept of this. So, to begin, we're going to be working those brows. Brows are the villain creator go to trick. Then we have the mouth, a very expressive area where we can see all kinds of expressions and that is going to give a villain an even better expressiveness. Then we have the partners. Our villains might have one or not, but with Ursula we have those eels that have that frightened look. Then we have Furlough. So to start we have the clothing and the lighting that are quite frightening really and they help make the image even scarier, more villainous. In the last slot, we've got the voodoo dude. His expression is sketchy and his face is light hidden, and these things help us know that he's a villain with a lot more ease. We also have the background. In all the three cases, we can see that it's kind of a red-purple background that normally makes us think of something darker. Here we have the structure of our voodoo doctor. We've started with a kind of geometrical shape that might be similar to a coffin or something like that. It's leaning to the left side. After this internal structure is based on a triangle. As you can see, they are all very angular shapes, like the one I'm making now with Frollo's face, our second villain. I'm going to go along little by little so that you can see how I do it easier. As you can see, he has that angular face. If you base your character on this guy, for example, you don't have to, okay? You have to keep in mind that the main point in all is that the corners that make up the face of your character have to end mainly in points. As you can see, in all three cases, all the characters are smiling, and these smiles tells us that they are evil. There's no doubt, there's no sign of good in these people. In Ursula's case, instead of those sh sharp features I was telling you about before, we're going to be looking at figures that are rounder. However, if we use the features of the brows, the eyes, um, the sharp nose, and that evil smile, we can see perfectly how we have our evil character. We are going to make a second analysis of the brows. We are going to be making an arced curve to the end of the hair, and we are going to elevate the expression by arcing the brow completely. And this way, we are going to get the expression of surprise. In the case of Ursula, who is a villain, we are going to add those marked eyelids and a sharp look, preferably with the shape of a sunflower seed. We are going to place the pupil in the middle with the iris. And lastly, we are going to mark those shadows under her eye. And here we are going to have as our end result a villain's eye. Is it right? We are going to move on to a second example. This time, we are going to be drawing a male villain. Let's mark the droopy eye. We are going to place the eye in the center and we are going to emphasize again that area of the shadows. We are going to move on to the face structure. I'm going to be doing a three quarters so that you can see what I mean. Here we will have the main base.
we are going to be focusing on the nose, on the brows, and on the mouth. So to start, we are going to curve those brows upwards. This is the simplest way to start our character. We are going to mark those eyelids, those droopy eyes. And what comes next? Yeah, those eyes, shadows. That's right. These are an essential part to drawing an evil character. We don't know why, but it is. Lack of sleep affects them. A sharp nose, and in this case one that's almost broken, helps us finish that character's personality. I'm going to also mark the cheeks and the area of the head bone. Lastly, I'm going to add in a smile that's going to tell us that he's sure of what he's doing. And maybe he's kind of laughing at us. The more we make the wrinkles on the character's features, the more emphasis we are going to have on the negative behavior this guy has. I'm going to try and fix the eye here because it's a bit... Okay, perfect. This guy is going to be our first villain. Well, except for the details we need to finish in the face. We can always go on completing our drawing as we go along. Now, it's basically just a question of testing alone changing areas. We can try to make the face even sharper. Maybe exaggerate some features. If you remember with Krella, has some extremely marked cheeks, impossible cheeks or jaffer, that has a face so long it's anatomically ridiculous, there is no doubt that these are more exaggerated features. We are going to move on to analyze the profile so that you can analyze this from another point of view. We are going to mark those brows again. We are going to repeat those droopy eyes. The nose is in profile so it's as we described it before. So like broken, wide, sharp. We are, we are going to mark the cheeks and the skull, the mouth, the jawline. Everything has to be sharp, remember, if you want to make a character similar to the Voodoo Doctor or Frollo, for example. If you are going to do one similar to Ursula, it's just a case of rounding things off all you can without losing those three main features, nose, eyes and brows. And then, if the mouth has that expression that is characteristic and normal within villains, perfect. But basically, within the character's expressiveness, this is what stands out the most. And there we're practically done with the character's profile. As I was saying, nose, eyes, brows, and... Now, I'm going to do this little structure here so you can use it when you are developing a character with triangular tendencies. From triangles, we are going to be able to start seeing our character. The big triangle is going to be a face, and the little ones are going to be the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the brows. If you look closely, the brows are going to be the only triangles looking upwards. And, well, the ears are also an option. It's not completely necessary, but seeing as we are making a completely angular character, this is the most appropriate way to do it. Let's move this bit here so that it doesn't bother us while doing our drawing. And we are going to lower this one so that we can draw on it better. 
I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit as well so that we don't have that powerful pink there. Like this. And well, now that we are almost have it, we are going to unselect it. And I'm going to paint with black on the structure I've created. I'm going to be using the triangles to help me while I'm drawing the features I mentioned before. Nose, mouth and eyes. Then we will have brows and ears. I'm going to be drawing something like a vampire. I'm going to be marking those brows a lot. We're going to round off the top of the head. We are going to mark those cheeks again and do the same structure in the other side. It's a little bit irregular, but in the end, regular characters normally have more character than those who are perfectly balanced and symmetrical. In the end, we are not perfectly symmetrical, so this gives our character some realism. Here we have that sharp nose, and I'm going to give him a smile. For this reason, I'm going to mark that cheek area. Now we will have the eyes. We are going to give him some small sharp eyes as well. And what we would have left as eyes would be the eyelids and the shadows. We are going to get tired of hearing eyelids, shadows, brows, nose, but this is the essential base to finish this course with good results. And well, here would have our kind of Nosferatu vampire. He's got his sharp eyes and that scary expression. See, that wasn't difficult at all. All you have to do is use those triangles we drew earlier as a base. It's going to help you to draw your own characters. I'm going to draw them here again because seeing I say never say it, well, In this case, as I was saying, the ears are a little bit sharper, but you can try with a figure that's more similar to Ursula so that you can practice with a little bit more complexity. All of this is going to be sharp and pointy. And well, these are the little touches that you have to add however you want. This is going to be a wrap on the third lesson. I hope it was good. And we worked out all of the details you might have with the characters and the features, how to do them, and then get brief summary of the schemes to use them in your future designs. In the next lessons, we are going to continue making a small summary on how to mock this all a little bit more. And how to characterize this even deeper. And well, I would also like to talk about designs, respecting shapes that can be round or triangular or square. You choose that bit. But the ones I'm going to do are mainly triangular, hardly ever circular. See you in the next lesson. We're going to start to prepare our character. See you guys. Bye.